Hello, welcome to this video brought to you by the South West London and Surrey Trauma Network. It's the first in a series of videos dedicated to massive hemorrhage treatment in the emergency setting as part of mass casualty planning. Further videos will concentrate on each of the products seen here in more detail, discussing their indications, contraindications and demonstrating their real-time usage. For this introduction, I would just like to describe each of the products very basically and people can then start to plan their access to supplies in trauma units and major trauma centres. The first product to draw your attention to is Celox Gauze. Celox Gauze is a Chitosan impregnated gauze. It's designed to activate the clotting cascade. Penetrating wounds in the axilla, in the groin, can be packed with this dressing and pressure applied and then it will have a direct hemostatic effect within the wound. The first field dressing or Israeli bandage or compression bandage is a roller bandage with a dressing pad attached. It's elastic and is therefore able to provide some degree of compressive force. It can be used to bandage a limb obviously but most importantly it can also be used in novel ways to bandage difficult to reach areas such as again the axilla, the groin or the perineum. One of the most important products that's come on the market and is back in fashion as regards major trauma and major hemorrhage management is the tourniquet. The combat application tourniquet or CAT. Seen here in black in its military version also available in a bright orange in its civilian version. If we return to the battlefield of Waterloo in 1815, the tourniquets there used by the surgeons on the French and on the British side would be virtually identical in their style to what you see in front of you now. Materials have changed obviously, theirs were red rubber and metal, these are Teflon material and Vel Velcro. However, the principle has remained unchanged for 200 years. When the tourniquet is removed from its packaging, it then looks like this. The salient points to note are an area here for wiping the time on. Once this is in place on the casualty, the Velcro is laid over there and the time should be written on here with a Sharpie. The second point is the windlass here or T-bar. This is turned to actually produce the compressive force of the tourniquet. The rest of the tourniquet is material held with Velcro. And again, it's important that this area is kept clean and free from dirt because that will affect the Velcro binding. The buckle on the tourniquet is designed to be used with both single threading or double threading. If in the military scenario, a soldier is using this on themselves, then they will thread it through one loop and then the buckle will be brought over. That works well, but is always then replaced by a tourniquet that's been threaded through two loops when the first responder arrives. In the civilian setting, and this is being applied by a first responder, both loops of the buckle should be used. And the working end goes through one side, through the other, and that makes a much more secure fixing on the actual tourniquet. As I say, we'll demonstrate each of these products in future successive videos. For now, this is a basic introduction to massive hemorrhage products that should be available for your trauma patients. Thank you for listening. Again, this is brought to you by the South West London and Surrey Trauma Network.